Good morning. Good morning to my sisters and my brothers in Christ. Um, y'all, this is the third one for the day. I'm going to go ahead and release all three because I don't like to hold up anything that the God has given me. And uh, like I say, I do a message every day, but God is so good. I, um, I'm in Exodus and I'm just breaking down everything that he's given me piece by piece for you guys. So you can understand where we're going, what we're doing, and you can receive what God is saying to the church. So, um, to his remnants, to his chosen people. So um, I love you guys, and let's pray before we get started. Father God in heaven, this is me, your child, Taisha. I come here with my sisters and my brothers in Christ. Lord, we need you. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We cannot, I know me, me, then we cannot do this without you. Father God, we need you. We need you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for every viewer. I thank you for every subscriber, Lord. I thank you so much for them, Lord. And I that you allow me to give them messages and give them words from you, Lord, to encourage them, to warn them, and also, also to edify the kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Lord, I rebuke any antichrist spirit or any python spirit that try to come in on us, Lord, and um, take any kind of residence in our spirit, Lord. We rebuke and send it back to the pits of hell. No one performing against thee shall prosper. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, this is the last one for the day. I was backed up. And one thing about me, I don't like to hold on to words. Um, I don't like to hold on to words. Um, if, I, if it's something I need to go ahead and say, because this is, we got a long way to go in Exodus. So therefore, I'm, uh, I like to go ahead and release and get it, you know, get it behind us. That's me doing my work, you know, for God. I, I like to do his work. Okay. Uh, chapter five, Exodus chapter five, verse two. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? that I shall obey him and let Israel go. I do not know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. Mm -mm -mm. So okay, chapter 5, verse 7. You are no longer to supply the people with straw for making bricks. Let them go and gather their own straw, but require them to make... Oh, hold on, that's too much, but I'm going to go ahead on and read it anyway. I'm going to read, this is going to be chapter 5, verse 6 through 9, because I just want to read it. The same day Pharaoh gave this autumn to the slave driver, to the slave driver in the over, overshears in charge of the people. You are no longer to supply the people with straw for making bricks. Let them go and gather their own straw, but require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That is why they are crying out. Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Make the work harder for the people so that they keep working and pay no attention to the lies. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Chapter 5, verse 23. Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble on, on this people. And you have not rescued your people at all. So Moses is pretty much pleading with God like, God, what is up? <laughs> you know, I went to try to get the Israel Israelites out of Egypt and Pharaoh has went in on them heavily. He is doing them wrong. He doing them wrong. So pretty much this message today is to let you know Satan cares nothing about God and his children. Nothing. So for those of you who feel like you want to um, feed the flesh, that's part of Satan. That is Satan. You know, feeding the flesh no, we got to feed the spirit and let the flesh. We got to starve the flesh. We got to starve the flesh. Satan wants to make your way hard. He tries to get in your head and also people around you to make you feel like you need him and not go. So what it's going to be like is that you're going to go through things. And as you go through things, you want to go back to your old ways of doing things, whether it's lying, cheating, stealing, your, whatever your old you, her or he, not your spiritual man. So when Satan comes, pretty much let's say this for example. Sometimes, even me, I struggle with letting go of my image because I'm so used to being seductive and wanted by men. Even though I'm married, my husband, he's nice, I love him and everything like that. But sometimes, I kind of want to know if I still got it. I still like, to, and that's that's her. That's not my spiritual man. 
because my spiritual man issue it don't really even matter and it should matter but because i because we battle with the flesh and the spirit her with it was within me sometimes want to know if i still got it if i still can turn the heads you know so i don't want to always lose my tight fitting pants and, and some of my clothing and um that's a problem and that's me wanting to worship you know, Satan wanted to live in the flesh. And at the end of the day, Satan make me feel like in my mind, do what you want to do. Do it, do it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Go ahead and do it. But see, he baiting me up. And then once I do it and I get to hell, now I'm tormented. And the devils and demons are just messing with me and uh, doing all kinds of stuff to me that is unholy and ungodly. And I wouldn't want that. So while you're here on earth, it's made to make you feel good. You know, like, um, you can do it, it's okay. But then when you get to hell, they, it's like, I tricked you, got gotcha. you. Now you're going to do me all kind of ways. And, you know, and, um, all these filthy things are happening to me. And sometimes you just want to scale your own self right. Watch those videos with some people, whether they true or not true, I still watch them. Because my cousin say, how you know if they're telling the truth? I don't care. If it seems like it's the truth and it's in my spirit, I know that hell is real. I don't need a hell vision. I'm going to watch this video on YouTube and scare my own self away from doing anything that's not of God. Whatever works for you. Like I said, if your right hand, what it is, uh, caught you, uh, something's the sin, chop it off or steal, whatever, you know what I mean. If anything going to cause you to sin, let it go. So with me, if it, if it takes me to watch a false hell uh a documentary that ain't really about here, but it scared me. Maybe say, Oh, I don't want to go to hell because that scared me, even if it might not be true or not true. It scared me, and I don't want to go to hell, so I'm gonna do right. That's how I work. I'm gonna do it. Okay, okay. Also, the next point, God want me to make okay, He tried to get in your head. Okay, I told y'all that, and people around you to make you feel like you need Him and not God. Okay, yeah, pretty much. Where is your God? You're having a hard time anyway. You know, ain't nothing working out for you. So why you want to serve God? You might as well do what you want to do. Don't listen to that. That's a lie from the piece of hell. Okay, the moment you start to live your life for the Father, all hell breaks the loose around you. That doesn't mean God is not working. Some things are just a test from God to see how much do you love him. So, when you're going through stuff, and it's like, I'm trying to worship God, like with me, for example, because I like to use me. I'm trying to worship God, and I have a, a seven-year-old that has autism, and I love my baby to death, but my baby, you know, the devil likes to use her to, she hits me, she throws things at me. I can be getting ready to do my hair, or put on a little makeup for the video, or just to get ready for you guys, and she'll just try to give me hell. She will, and that's my own baby. She ain't number seven. What can I do with my own child? You know, I can't send her away. No way. This is my baby. So I still go through things, even though that I'm trying to minister. I still go through things, but I can't let that stuff get in my way. I'm still going to come out here. Like, I got a whole room in my house that I set up. that has got pretty decorations and everything. I hear when people call me when I'm doing a video. I got all kind of stuff Um, that's... um. In my house, that's not that's my granddaddy. You see this? I'm gonna let y'all know because I'm a realist and I like to let y'all know what's going on. That's my granddaddy calling me. He wanna cut my grass because he got a lung surge. My grass don't even need to be covered. He just wanna he up early in the morning instead of thinking about God, praising God. This is an old man, 70 some years old, 75, 76. So the praising God, he calling me to make money off of me because he feel like I got some money to cut my grass and my grass ain't even ready to be cut yet. So it's like, and this this is a distraction. I had to, I'm not post. I knew better because my phone really supposed to be cut off. But stuff like that is, I'm easily to get angry. Pray for me in that area. Certain things, part of my language, piss me off. But I have to be open with y'all and honest with y'all because, like I said, this is my walk, and I'm not perfect. But I strive to be more and more like Jesus every day. Moving along. The moment you start to live your life for the Father, all hell breaks loose. That doesn't mean God is not working some things, working on some things, or it's just a test from Him to see how much you love Him. You must fight the good fight of faith. So you got to stand on the word. You got to know that even though my daughter ran away, you know, even though uh, my son. Went to school and got suspended from fighting. 
Um, even though my husband works so much that it's as if he's avoiding being the man of the house, even though um, everything that I do seems like it's an issue and I'm only trying to be the best me I can be, I still have to fight the good fight of fight, the good faith, the good fight of faith. I have to still hold on to God's word. You know, we got to do y'all. And I, I, I was to this man on prophetic dry time. And he told me something that, and this is what I want y'all, I want to repeat. This is his word. This is from something that he spoke on. But this is what I need for y'all to know. I can talk to y'all. I can minister to y'all. But if y'all don't believe, then what can God do? You know, you got to have faith. You got to believe. Like if you want some, a, a little lady say she wanted a baby. You got to believe when you hear a message that's saying that you're going to have a baby. Believe that that message is for you and you're going to have a baby. Um, if you want that child to be delivered, you want him or her back at home. Believe that God can do it and they will be back at home. You got to believe. You know, some of you guys don't see things happening because you don't believe. Like, you know, I can pour my heart out to y'all. I can read the Bible to y'all verbatim and explain and give you examples, but if you don't believe, then it's like, oh, uh, whatever. You know, I said, I talked with my cousin yesterday, and you know what I got from everything I talked about her with? She don't believe. She don't believe. She have doubt. So I ask that if it's God's will to make her out of a, a believer, you know, some people need to witness heaven or hell. Maybe both. I don't need to. I uh, believe by word. You know, when God speak his word, I believe his word. And then and I'm done when I keep it moving. So when I say that we have a supernatural anointing, I believe that we have a supernatural anointing. I believe that the moment that we pray for anything that's in alignment with the will of God, we have it. You have to believe it. You cannot uh, come on here, listen to these prophetic, like we're speaking prophetic words from God into your life and you don't believe them, if you don't believe them, then it's not going to manifest for you because you don't believe. So the key to manifestation is believing. That's, now that was free. That's a bonus. The key to manifestation in your life is believing. So your faith comes by believing, by hearing and believing. So once you hear what they say, the Lord, believe it, accept it for your life and take off running with it. Run with it. Walk into it as if it's already happening. Just start walking in it. You know, it's things that I want to hold up and say, oh, I don't want to do it. I ain't ready. I ain't ready. But I promise you, just as sure as my with thousands, I have a thousand business cards coming in the mail by October the 16th. When Saturday night and Friday night come and the weekend come and they in that club, they're going to yet have some uh, flyers some cards put on their car. And it has my picture. That's my picture, and it has my ministry. And for them to follow me on YouTube and follow Jesus. So I'm coming right to the club. I'm coming to the club parking lot. Yeah, I'm going to do that. You know, because that's what God put me in there. You can, that's from me. Somebody that got complexes out of this world. But when God calls you to do something, you got to do it. I don't just talk it. I do it. And, you know, I could go out. You know what? I might record myself. I let my, my husband record me because he's going to come with me. I'm going to get him and just be serving. He might not want to do it, but he need, to, he need to serve some for the Lord as well. He need to evangelize some himself. So I'm going to get him to video me. And uh, I'm going to let y'all see me where the club going to be at. <laughs> I'm going to show y'all the club where I'm going to be at. And we're going to get out there. And I'm going to try to be unseen because a lot of people get upset with you being on their car. So I'm going to probably wait till like 12 or something like that. I can't do it too late. I might have to go by myself. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I might have to. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But I'm going to get out there and I'm going to put these um cards on their car. And then hopefully, God's will, even if they don't see it that night, because I'll try to put it where they'll see it maybe, you know, in the morning. But I'm going to put them on their, little, on, their, on their, what it is, the windshield wipers. Put them to the windshield wipers and I'm gone. And uh, hopefully they'll, Find me and um and I'm not gonna do it just in my city. 
God put in my spirit to go to Pensacola. He told me to go to, I'm probably going to ride down to Mississippi. I'm going to go to Florida. I'm going to go to Mississippi. And I'm going to be passing these cards out because the word got to be spoken. And while I'm here, I am going to serve. And I'm going to get as many people as I can, you know, to know that this is, this, this is real. I'm here. This is something for the people ministry. We ain't going, I'm not going nowhere to God call me home. And everybody will hear his word through me. And they will see his transformation of what he can do through a submission of a living sacrifice. So, all right, y'all, because I want to go walking now. I got to walk off some of this weight. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I bow your heads. Let's get a God respect. Father God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus with me and all my sisters and my brothers, Father God. Lord, I know that you have a calling on my life. I know that it's about to get, it's about, it's about to be, how they say, off the chain. <laughs> it's about to, we're about to get radical. We about to do some supernatural healing, some deliverance. It's about to get, I'm saying, I'm going to pray over these cars and every person that touch them, Father God. Going to have your spirit to the well in them, Lord. The, the, all of those that believe, Lord, that believe, Father God. All of those that you have been, that have been chosen by you because everybody ain't going to get it. But I'm going to try to get it out there to as many people as I can. Lord, I love you. I thank you. I praise you. I worship you. I thank you so much, Lord. I thank you so much. I could not do this without you. In Jesus' name I pray. No weapon born against thee shall prosper. At the sound of my voice, Father God, I lift my hands up, Father God, and when I release my hands down, Father God, it is finished. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I love y'all. Be good. Be blessed by the best. Get out there and disciple. Let's bring some, bring some of my sisters and brothers home. Bye-bye.